Welcome to Fox College Shoots, one of the great venues in the sport. Two of the great programs in college basketball. It is Louisville making the trip here to Bloomington to take on Indiana. And we welcome you courtside. Joe Davis with Steve Lavin and Lisa Byington joins us in just a moment. A couple teams off to good starts this year in probably the two best conferences in college hoops going head-to-head -to -head today. Yeah, really, Joe, if you're a college basketball fan, Christmas has arrived early. ACC Big Ten, no doubt the Big Ten, the deepest conference in the country in terms of potential NCAA tournament bids. The ACC at the top has the most teams capable of cutting down the nets come March. Indiana high expectations this season. A big part of that is who they've got at center inside, and Juwan Morgan, their senior. Well, Morgan, a player that's improved all aspects from year to year. Uh, his confidence on his catches, the aggressiveness, footwork to finish, uh, an adept passer as well, and a Wooden Award candidate as a result. Uh, the Hoosiers will play through the big fella throughout. And he's one of our Geico players to watch. On the other side, it's Louisville's leading scorer, Jordan Wara. Another player on the front line that brings versatility. I uh, have to honor his shot. He's coming off a game where he's four for four from the three-point line, but dangerous off the bounce and can finish at the rim as well. And he's part of this lineup, Chris Mack. Has three transfers in it, including the captain and the point guard, Kristen Cunningham. Stephen Enoch coming off a huge performance this week on Wednesday. And for Indiana, along with the senior, Juwan Morgan, two freshmen, two sophomores, and of course the highly touted freshman, Romeo Lankford, one of the top recruits they've had here in a long, long time. 20th meeting between Indiana and Louisville, and off we go from Assembly Hall. And it's Indiana coming off back-to-back -back two point wins to open Big Ten play, trying to beat Louisville for the first time since 2002. This is the talent to freshman Langford. Finding out Durham. And now here they get it to Morgan for his first touch. He backs down, he spins inside and reverses it off the glass, no good. A good possession though, if you're Archie Miller, you like the ball movement and investigating the post early in this ball game. Cardinals in the first year under Chris Mack at 6-2, looking for a fourth consecutive win. And what is their final non-conference road test today? Here's Cunningham. Now Sutton for three. And he's really coming on for Louisville. Guy that they feel like at this point they can't take off of the floor. And this is his first shot today. A very active defense here by Louisville. Both these teams want to keep the ball in front, limit dribble penetration, provide that resistance at the rim. No easy buckets. Rob Finnessy in and out. Good box out, rebound for Steven Eno. Here is their leading scorer, Jordan Ward. Now Darius Perry with a jab step and a free throw line jumper. Halfway down and out, and a foul on the rebound. So there is Chris Mack for the nine years as head coach at Xavier. I think a lot of people thought that he would just ride into the sunset there, coach there as alma mater forever, did so for nine seasons, but makes the jump to the ACC, signed a seven-year deal. What an ideal fit for Louisville to provide that stability, a steady stewardship after some rocky years, some controversy off the court, of course, the dismissal of Rick Pitino, uh, but Chris Mack, as good as it gets in college basketball. So far for Indiana, a little bit like their game Tuesday in State College when they started one for 11 from the field. They trailed that game 9 nothing. They covered the win at 64-62. Here's Wara, trying to stuff it down. Morgan came over to help. They reset the shot clock, and Louisville resets the set. This Indiana defense. Cunningham driving into Morgan to lay it in for the game's first points. Two and a half minutes in. Well, Cunningham with that straight line drive to the basket. 
Indiana not able to provide the help necessary. Cruisers looking for their first bucket. Here's Langford. Romeo Langford with a step back jumper. Open the scoring. It's on the tape two for the freshman. The preseason freshman of the year in the Big Ten. on Warrell's shot. Ball coming off the middle three fingers. Splashes one through the net. A lot of confidence coming off a game where he was four for four from the three-point line, so he's feeling it. That's what 21 in that blowout win against Central Arkansas. Morgan can't get it to go, and a rebound for Dwayne Sutton. The win for Louisville came after back-to-back -back wins against Michigan State. Seton Hall. A little bit of a cruise session in that game on Wednesday. That's a triple for Kristen Cunningham. How about this, coach? First year grad transfer, voted a captain a couple of months into his time on campus. Well, first year head coach. And Cunningham, a leader to see him orchestrate and in transition. Shot maker, playmaker. And Chris Mack, when he took over, Joe, only had seven scholarship players. They went the free agency market, got three graduate transfers to come in and help immediately, and it's paid dividends. Back out of bounds, it will stay here. Now Louisville off to a good start, looking for a fourth consecutive win. Take a break, be back to Bloomington after this. Good competition. This provides a report card, a real measuring stick of how your team responds to a big time environment and the assembly hall crowd the hoosier fans have been on point from the national anthem forward there's chris mack first year as a head coach at louisville and on the other sideline it's archie miller the second season at indiana after the six years at dayton in his first year, they went 16 and 15, 9 and 9 in Big Ten play, and missed the NCAA tournament for a second year in a row. This feels like a group where, if they were to miss the tournament again, it would qualify as a big disappointment because there were some high expectations for the Hoosiers this year. Well, each year the culture within your own program grows in terms of the standard of excellence. And if you come to Indiana, you want to compete for championships, both Big Ten and national titles. And Lankford there, so comfortable. We saw him earlier with the step back, able to create distance between himself and the defender, tickle the twine, and there he just sized one up. Big Ten preseason freshman of the year has the first four points for Indiana as fresh off of the bench, Malik Williams gets loose and stuffs it home. Now this Louisville Cardinal team has a bench that early in the season has been very productive. Uh, that's been a difference in some contests. Justin Smith and one will head to the line for a chance at three. And good movement without the ball. Well executed, a well devised alignment offensively. And you see the two man game, the throwback, that backside triangle. They empty the post, and Smith able to absorb that hit. Still have the presence of mind to keep the eye on target. Banks one down off the window, Joe. Kind of a, an interesting dichotomy in offensive numbers when you're looking at the Hoosiers. They're top 10 in the country in field goal percentage. And a lot of that comes from, like you're talking about, sharing the ball, good movement. But they're also the worst in the Big Ten in terms of turning the ball over. And Archie Miller says that's when the opposite happens. When they play too casually, they don't move, they don't share the ball. Yeah, I'd say the turnovers and free throw shooting are two areas that they have to improve upon if they want to contend for a Big Ten championship. Here is Langford. And a rebound for Williams. Indiana's won back-to-back -back games to open the Big Ten schedule. Back-to-back two-point wins. As Laura goes baseline right by Justin Smith. A slow rotation by the Hoosiers. Archie Miller will not be happy with that possession defensively, but give Laura credit. A little lift fake. And one bounce covered a lot of real estate here at Assembly Hall for that dunk. Here's Smith trying to take it into Warren. Can't hit up close. That's been one of the problems for him in his couple years here at Indiana. Finishing, using that athleticism around the bucket. 
Now Perry penetrates and kicks. It's Williams on a drive, giving the dribble up. And finding an open man underneath, it's Sutton. And what a start to this one for Louisville. Well, playing in pairs, alertness, finding the open man, a hallmark of Chris Mack's teams. And they're playing with that pep in the step or the confidence uh, in a very tough environment. Let's face it, Assembly Hall is hostile as it gets in college basketball. It's already a pretty tested group. They've passed a couple of those big tests, beating Michigan State, beating Seton Hall on the road. Here's Langford getting to the 10 and rolling it in. And he's got six of the first Hoosier, six of the first eight Hoosier points. Well, and Langford shown his versatility, Joe. That length and strength allows him to get to the hoop. What an electric environment. Sutton tried to quiet him, found the heel to the rim. Finnessy pushes back the other way. Navigating, finding Durham. Cunningham, when he brings the ball up the floor, keeps the head up like a good quarterback, always looking there. Division found Perry, whose miss was cleared by Sutton in traffic. Able to get a shot up, but it wouldn't go, and he touched it last. Now Langford, three for his first four. A good start for the Hoosiers freshman. Well, turns one down and then able to maneuver very shifty in that change of direction and able to finger roll. Some style points there as well, a little finesse. Mr. Basketball out of Indiana, as Hoosier fans know well at this point, which they've had, as you would expect, a lot through the years. Although their first one since Cody Zeller, that's seven years ago. That shouldn't happen, right? I mean, Mr. Basketball out of a basketball-rich state like this shouldn't escape Indiana's grasp seven years in a row. Well, and the Boilermakers have had something to do with that sure. success under Matt Painter. And that's led to Purdue now being a factor in the recruiting wars in state, and also the turnover in coaches. Let's face it, there hasn't been, Joe, the stability at the top in terms of leadership at Indiana. And that's what Archie Miller will bring to this program. Known as a great recruiter. It's kind of how he made his name under his brother Sean as an assistant at Arizona. So going to Dayton. He's already put together a great freshman class for next season after a really good class this year. They get it in deep to Morgan. And he's got a chance at three. Well, good execution here on the out-of-bounds play. Just carving out space inside. And the muscle, the stick and some nifty footwork as well to find daylight, step to the line for the old-fashioned three-point play. His first three of the day. Well, Durham back in after a quick rest as Langford gets his first time on the bench today. And that out-of-bounds play, a good call by Archie Miller, and it's important early that Morgan feels good about himself, gets involved, and helps you at both ends of the floor and offensively, go to your big fella, give him a touch, let the big dog eat. Here's Ryan McMahon. About 80% of his shots come from outside. Didn't look comfortable when he got in with the trees. Working around for a triple from Dwayne Sutton. Well, so many weapons on the perimeter. Sutton lines one up there, but Indiana's got to be aware of McMahon as well. He's a sharpshooter from distance, and when they stretch teams, distort teams defensive. Here's Durham. That puts a lot of pressure because now there's more space in the post, and also more scenes and gaps for the Cardinals to drive the ball into. So, not an easy matchup uh, when you face this Cardinal team that can shoot it from the three and can put it on the deck and create. McMahon catch and shoot. They're kind of like looking in a mirror for these two teams, at least from a defensive perspective, isn't it? No doubt. Excellent ball pressure, good help defensively as well, and providing resistance to the rim. Both teams take pride in their rebounding. Deron Davis, who they would really love to get going, had that Achilles injury that ended his freshman or ended his sophomore season. He's dealt with foul trouble, 
while still coming back from that injury, and he hits his first shot today. We've seen a concerted effort by the Hoosiers to get the ball down low into the paint. It looks like a hook, offensive foul. Well, Hoosiers looking to go down low, single coverage, the jump hook. Why not? Bottoms from range. Time out. A Louisville basketball fan, and though he grew up in the state of Indiana, he was actually closer to Louisville's campus than Bloomington, his hometown of New Albany, Indiana, just across the Ohio River, about six miles from Louisville, compared to the nearly 90 miles to Indiana. Both schools recruited him, but after the recent coaching change, Langford eliminated Louisville from his list. Chris Mack did try to reach out, re-engage, sent a text message to Langford's dad, but it was too late in the process. The connection is still there, though, guys. Langford said some of his friends are still Louisville fans, but for today, and for today only, they are Romeo Langford and IU fans. Yeah, all right, he wound up choosing Indiana over Kansas and Vanderbilt. A huge, huge get for Archie Miller. Here's Davis. Koya Gow went straight up, and it wound up being a travel. Uh, you know, obviously, it's a huge get, right? He's a top 10 recruit. But when you think of the bigger picture of Archie Miller trying to make a splash in this program and in recruiting in this state, it was huge. Oh, no doubt. You look through the years, whether it's Steve Alford or Damon Bailey, uh, you have to get the elite level players in your backyard, uh, the state of Indiana, in this case with the Hoosiers. And Archie Miller and his staff, very diligent, hardworking crew. There's that turnover by the Hoosiers has played them this year. Jordan Wara stuffs it down. Well, you think of him as a talented scorer and a versatile scorer. You don't necessarily think of the ability to do that. Well, again, the Swiss Army knife approach, you can slice you in so many ways. We've seen it from distance, off the bounce, there in transition with that authoritative slam dunk. And it all scores with seven now. Davis wants it inside, gets it against the gal. He faces up with one dribble, gives it up. Nearly turns it over. Three to shoot. Green doesn't seem to realize he does in time to hit a three. And a big shot as well. An answer for the Hoosiers from distance. See Louisville spread the court. Those three point shooters. And stretch the Hoosiers defense. AJ King coming off the of season I-17 on Wednesday night. They're driving into Morgan. Loader won't go. And rebound pulled in by Davis. Boy, physical play here. Early. Now, what you expect though, these two programs, these two coaches? Absolutely. I like it when there's some no calls. How to play old school basketball on a Saturday afternoon. Davis inside, maneuvering well. Morgan, check that. Bringing Indiana back to within one. Inside 10 to shoot. B.J. King finds war, baseline drive, through contact, will head to the line for two shots. Hoosiers going down low, a little isolation, the back down dribble by Morgan and finish. And how about Wara behind the back? Ooh. Rolling one down with velocity one more time. Spacing, keep your post spacing. Oh, Jamo, we're diving for the layups on the post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, make sure we dive for the layup. Zach, even a second cutter into yeah, yeah. the post as they're, as they're crowd. Keep it middle and see the floor, though. If you turn baseline too quick, it push you under the basket. All right? Okay, Sutton, Sutton's got going from three right now. We got to address that. Much better, much better in the post to be in two places at once. Well, some great instruction by both coaches in those huddles. And we take a look at Morgan there, avoiding 
the help defense by turning baseline where he could get daylight and a good look at the basket. What impressed me about those two timeouts, not only the informative instruction that those coaches imparted to their players, but you also had a group of interested and engaged listeners, uh, the pupils, schools in session in those mini timeouts, and that can often be the difference if you come out and execute between a win and a loss. You got to look there at the bucket from Morgan that Chris Mack was referencing. Four makes one of two and extends the lead back 2-2. Two -two. Indiana's not led in this game. Last time it was tied, it was 2-2. Two -two. Despite Louisville's best attempts to take the crowd out of the game, it has been a rocking environment here at Assembly Hall. Indiana's looked to drive it to the paint and post it up. And play through their bigs, concerted effort in recent minutes. That's thrown away. Here's Wara to the rim. Can't hit the layup. He's able to get it back, and on the second try, moving to double figures already left. Well, and influencing the game in a positive manner for the Cardinal. Both ends of the floor, seeing his defense, anticipation into the passing lanes, and that gets him out in transition. And even the craftiness here in the open court was impressive in terms of the way he takes an angle to shield the defender, uh, tries to pick up that foul, and he's there, poor hustle by the Hoosiers to get down the floor to pick up that rebound. Warren able to get his own and put one back in. And while Romeo Langford missing the first free throw, and it's been an issue for the Hoosiers this season. One of the worst free throw shooting teams in the country, although coming off their best performance at the line when they hit 11 of 14 at Penn State Tuesday. On this trip, he's got one of two. I think I heard somebody from the Indiana student section, which was really quiet, scream on that first attempt. I think there's a there's an inside job there. Louisville fan in the middle of the student section. An infiltrator. Yeah. He's no longer there. They've booted him. It's a matter of seconds. Yeah. Sutton into the lane. Through contact. Dwayne Sutton able to finish. Sutton at six foot five. Highly skilled, Lankford to the cup. Good coverage there. A contested shot because of the early help or rotation by the Cardinal. There is Perry in the mid-range game, can't hit. That's where Lankford, as he matures his game, becomes more seasoned. We'll see when he has a double team and draws that type of attention from opponents uh, to be able to pocket pass or fan the ball back outside to an open teammate. Justin Smith, point blank, no, and then a foul on the rebound. Goes on Indiana, Evan Fitzner is first. Here's Sutton, just able to stay with it and split defenders and put one down off the window. And he's showing his ability from long range as a sniper, uh, but also to put it on the deck, those broad shoulders, and a stout approach, a very physical basketball player. Steven Enoch establishing good position against Morgan. The UConn transfer spinning, and a hook shot goes for a guy who's really coming around for Louisville and had a huge game against Central Arkansas, scoring 16 points and pulling down nine boards on Wednesday. Yeah, and he's not comfortable there. He knew that there was no help coming from the Hoosiers in single coverage, isolation. Why not? Well, that looked like a travel. It was right in front of Chris Mack on the Louisville bench. He couldn't believe it wasn't called. Chris Mack wanted to help trap along the sidelines there to help his team. They're on nowhere close. Indiana's gone a little bit cold on the offensive end. And no angles to the basket. Good help as well by Louisville. And one and done. Holding Indiana to one shot possession. There's Perry no good. It's really amazing what Louisville's been able to do on the defensive end this year. Stylistically, completely different than what they're used to around there in the first year under Chris Mack. Inside they go to Morgan. The kick, the three. Langford, no. The rebound, something. Well, you're right, Joe. Chris Mack's approach to be strong on the ball, harass the basketball, try and level off little penetration. 
uh, but still be aggressive in terms of ball pressure and then provide help behind that ball pressure. And full front in the post, not allow teams to get easy catches. You knock in a tough spot there. War is able to split it. And they get fouled on his way up. Two more shots coming for him. Well, because of his skill on the perimeter, the sharpshooters that Louisville can put on the court really puts defenses in a bind. Uh, opponents have to pick their poison. If you collapse inside, they're going to bang down threes. If you stretch a three-point line, they can get into gaps or seams or play through the post. For more on Wara, who now is 11, we go to Lisa. Yeah, he's a player who only had one D1 offer after his junior year in high school. That was to Vermont, so he decided to go the prep school route. Was recruited a little bit more after that, and when he got to Louisville, he still had a lot of work to do. Lost 20 pounds, went from about 240 to 220. This past summer, played for the Nigerian national team. That helped his confidence, and yesterday at practice, he looked around Assembly Hall, and he said, I can't believe where this journey has taken me to play in an environment like this as we can hear after that bucket show. From Rob Finnessy to bring Indiana back to within five. Here's a lob, a tough catch for Enoch, couldn't pull it in, and last touch by Indiana. 3.39 left to go in the first half in Bloomington. The 20th meeting between the Cardinals and the Hoosiers. Indiana leads the all-time series, but Louisville's won four in a row, trying to make it five on this Saturday afternoon. All right, Mike, it's been a great day of hoops so far here on Fox. Of course, after the 17-year run for Rick Pitino ended in the scandal, and then the year under David Padgett, Louisville goes down and hires Chris Mack in late March after the nine seasons at Xavier and didn't bring in any freshmen for his first season, but already has a top five recruiting class for next season with five top 100 prospects on it. Back-to-back -back losses earlier this season against Tennessee and Marquette, then upset Michigan State in overtime. Followed that with a road win over Seton Hall. Looking for their fourth consecutive win today. Joe Davis, Steve Lavin, Lisa Bynes in at Assembly Hall. Rob Finnessy with the ball for the Hoosiers. His fellow freshman Langford. Indiana's hit some timely threes to cut into the Cardinals' deficit and then being aggressive at the rim as we see Langford again drive the ball into the paint area. And that's a way to create point production is put the ball down low to your bigs on post catches but also with quick ball movement and driving the ball into the paint and drawing fouls get yourself closer to the bonus eventually the double bonus and you can chip away the deficit by knocking down free throws that's just been easier said than done for Indiana much of this season that's been a mystery anemic numbers from the free throw line Coach Miller thinks it's contagious like poison oak. It's kind of spread throughout the roster. Good take. Morgan off of the glass. Seven for Jawan Morgan. Indiana back to within a possession. Inside three minutes here in the first half. Here's McMahon. Got the defender off his feet. But the ball to Cunningham. He tees it up and buries a three. Boy, and that was all set up by McMahon. The shot fake put the defender in the popcorn popper. Then one bounce, draw a second defender, and then kick the ball to the open man for the wide open three by Cunningham. You are so versatile. You referenced Poison Oak on one possession and then the popcorn popper on the next. Now, Romeo Langford, what do you got now? Did you smell that popcorn when we walked into Assembly Hall? Oh, yeah. Wow. Did you get some? Felt like it was at a baseball game. Did you get any popcorn? I've got some right underneath here. You didn't notice? No, I don't want that anymore under the chair. Oh, thanks, Lab. You can keep it. Here's a three. And an air ball from Sutton. Tracked down in the corner by Green. Well, there's no room here at the table with all the notes, the research. Your man Rick bringing it. An A game of research. Fantasy against Cunningham. Gets rejected by the help defense from Enoch. Well, again, another example of Indiana driving the ball, being aggressive, and didn't pay off on that possession because of the good help by Louisville. But the Hoosiers have crawled back into this game 
by it in the basket area. That's something they've done quite a bit of on this young season. That is play from behind and erase some of those big deficits. Here's a backdoor cut for Green who lost the handle into the hands of McMahon who looks to push for Louisville. A lob ahead to Williams. Somehow is able to get his hands on it. And then a three was off the side of the backboard by Cunningham. Langford, one on two, takes it himself and turns it over only to get it right back and get fouled. Aggressive offensive mindset. Langford has to be careful within that aggressiveness to also play with purpose, make good judgments or reads off the bounce because Louisville and every team he faces this year is going to have an eight in the box approach in terms of help defense and multiple defenders will be in his path to the basket and that's why it's so critical that he makes good decisions off the bounce and also keeps his balance keeps his feet under him so he can make those reads whether to take the shot himself or gather and then kick the ball to open teammates and one of the big ten's top scoring duos doing it again today Morgan and Langford. They've got 17 of Indiana's 27. And they miss a foul. Number five on the Hoosiers. It's Justin Smith's first. The Louisville is not trailed in this game. They lead by three with a minute and a half. Here's War in traffic, still pulls the trigger. Rebound from Williams. McMahon takes advantage of the second opportunity. Well, intelligent basketball. Great time to shoot the three pointers off offensive rebounds because the opponent is in rotation. And that's where you get the open looks. Great pass by Williams, and McMahon pays it off. And now Langford's going to get another chance at the line with a one and one here. Now tenacious offensive rebounding by Malik Williams. Rebounding out of his area. Securing the ball and then finding McMahon for that three ball. Throughout this season, McMahon has dialed up some daggers on opponents. He had 24 off the bench against Michigan State in the Cardinals. Big win over Spartans. And then against Seton Hall in the second half, some timely threes as well. As they're able to beat the Pirates on the road. Those are quality wins that the NCAA tournament will put under the magnifying glass. And when you look at the criteria of the NCAA selection committee, it's about picking up those type of wins that put you in the NCAAs. Foul line continues to be a problem for Indiana. Four for eight in this first half. Here's Malik Williams. With a double coming, he finds Cunningham. McMahon got the defender off his feet, gave it right back for a Cunningham three that's off the line. The shot clock turned off. Indiana can have the final shot if it wants it. I'd imagine the Hoosiers, Joe, get something going into the paint. That could lead to a three-pointer, driving it into the paint, draw help and kick it, or isolate and play through your bigs. Better get moving, down to five. Here's Finnessy into the lane. A lot of contact, but no call. And that's how this first half comes to an end. With Archie Miller and this Assembly Hall crowd livid that there's no whistle. They're letting them play lab just like you like. Wow. Brass knuckles. How about this? Smash mouth basketball. What an early Christmas present for us to be sitting courtside in this environment. Lisa's got Chris Mack. You knew that the start would be key. You knew your response after a surge from them would be key. How do you evaluate your attack mentality here in this first half? Well, I think we were almost uh, too conservative on offense. I mean, we we, we kept, uh, kept taking care of the ball the whole half. I think we got one or two turnovers. 
But, um, you know, for a while there, we were just sort of playing four out and not really getting a whole lot of cutting and whatnot. Give Indiana credit. Langford and Morgan combined for 18 of their points. You knew that they were going to be their two big guns. Corrections are what? Well, our, our bigs are letting them turn baseline. And I think we're doing a decent job after they scored a couple buckets of crowding and bringing our perimeter players down to help. But then, then our post guys are getting beat where their help isn't. So we got to do a better job of, like, forcing them to go middle uh, when we're in those situations. Thank you. Joe? All right, Lisa, and both teams' defenses performed pretty well in that first half, forcing the opposition to their lowest first half totals of the season. Get you to Los Angeles with Mike, Casey, and Donnie for the Fox College Hoops halftime report after this break. Ready to open the second half here in Bloomington. Louisville has led the entire way, 33-28. Our first half stats, pretty physical, pretty defensive-minded first half. Both these teams with their lowest point total in the first half this season. And as we get you ready for the second half, welcome to the backcourt side, Joe Davis and Steve Lavin. A real physical, tough game, kind of like you'd expect when you get these two programs together, just separated by a little more than 100 miles. Yeah, such a significant matchup for these two programs. And when you look at the stats, really pretty balanced, other than Louisville with three more made three-pointers uh, where they separated themselves. And also 7-0 in terms of second chance points. And so those are two things that moving into the second half, Archie Miller will address with his team, getting high hands, closing out, taking away airspace of Louisville's three-point shooters, and then hold them to one shot, not allow the Cardinals to get those second chance opportunities. You saw the update on our players to watch coming into this game. Seven for Juwan Morgan. Meanwhile, Jordan Wara, their leading scorer on the season for Louisville, has 11 leading again today. Here we go in the second half. The Cardinals trying to win their fourth in a row under first year coach Chris Mack. Here's Darius Perry looking for his first make. He is now 0 for 6, but another offensive rebound gives him another chance at second chance points. And Stephen Enoch takes advantage to your point lab. There's two more. That's 9 nothing now in second chance points for Louisville. Yeah, and give Enoch credit there. He posted up right under the basket, but almost like Chief and one threw over the cuckoo's nest when Nicholson kept loading wow. up Chief. I'm going way back now. Some of our viewers will have to uh, Google that film, yeah. but uh, was an Academy Award winner, a guy named Jack Nicholson. Oh yeah, actor. heard of him. But Enoch didn't go to the block. Instead, he just carved out position at point blank range and ends up with a zero footer. That's high percentage basketball. Morgan looks like he just got hit up high underneath by Enoch. They're not stopping the play yet, but Morgan's taking a look at his hand, reaching up to his face, seeing if there's maybe blood. Oh, that'd be blood after that. Justin Smith with an attack of the basket for a slam. Well, hello. Talk about smelling salts. That is high percentage basketball. A zero footer, a good counter punch or answer as he punches one through the rim, up, up, and away. Mm. And they got Enoch for his second foul. Justin Smith is going to head to the line for a chance at three. Let's take a look. Yeah. Officials are taking a look as well. 13 and white. Turned right into it. Yeah, that's an incidental. It wasn't as though he was throwing the elbow. He just had his hands, the equivalent of horns, up and out, uh, but didn't thrust it in an intentional way, at least from that initial angle. Now, again, keep in mind, ref's got to make a bang-bang call. Now we're viewing it. I beg your pardon, Lab. There was no foul on the dunk. Second foul on Enoch came just before that. Yeah, that's an example of that replay of just two players fighting for post position. Uh, offense trying to get a good catch, carve out space, and defense trying to front or three-quarter and not allow that pass into the interior. And it'll be interesting to see how the officials call the game in the second half. To this point, they've really let these two teams play, which has been refreshing, kind of old-school basketball. Uh, but they will be mindful uh, to make sure it doesn't get too physical, Joe. Cunningham 
Jones. Enoch rolling to the bucket. Now drive from Perry. Lost the handle. Threw it up wildly off the bottom side of the rim. Now back comes Indiana. Rob Finnessy goes hard to the baseline. Gets it in the corner and leaves a three short. Leaves it off for an Enoch slam. Again, the versatility of Sutton. The threat of his shot leads to those hard closeouts. And then his intelligent decision to put it on the deck and play make leads to another zero footer for the Cardinals. John Davis hit his only shot during the first half. He hits his first shot of the second half. And that's when the Hoosiers have been at their best. You don't have to force the action in the post, but at least explore it, investigate, let your bigs get touches, force the defense to collapse, give yourself a chance to get fouled or make a high percentage look. Perry gets around Durham. It's into the hands of Enoch, looking for two more second chance points. Instead, he turns it over. Finnessy on the push. Into the lane, a finger roll, but an offensive foul. This crowd not happy with that call. Good position. What do you think? Archie Miller not happy. Uh, but that's again where you have to be mindful as the offensive player to maneuver to speed where you know that second line defender is coming and be able to stop and pop or fan the ball out to an open teammate. Jordan Wara trying to force it up there. Got it back again and got fouled. And Louisville continues to dominate on the offensive glass. Oh, Archie Miller decides himself livid. And early in a coach's career, as Andy Miller, as Archie Miller is, you try to establish that culture. And that's why he's so fiery in terms of his competitive nature on the sidelines. Or makes the first. It's checking with Lisa. Archie Miller fiery to his team about not being a two-trick pony. And it's interesting. You see with Jawan Morgan out of this game, he was appealing to his team. we got to find a third score. Justin Smith, he liked that matchup. Al Durham, Devontae Green, he challenged all three of those guys. Ultimately, three assists on 11 buckets in the first half. Not good enough. That'll work. That'll make the head coach happy. And it comes from Justin Smith, who's now got six. We'll have a chance at a seventh here. Uh, and well executed. Uh, Davis with the delivery just throws a strike. And that's when Indiana's been at their best. Uh, when they again investigate, explore, don't force, but give the interior a look first and play inside out. You can even come back to the inside. And that's just a sound approach offensively. The foul, by the way, was number three on Dwayne Sutton. Justin Smith now is seven, trying to provide that third option for Indiana offensively. Wore way outside, forced it up there, and left it well short. The important thing is they finished that defensive possession with the rebound. Durham still looking for his first points of the game. The guy averaging close to double figures on the year. Justin Smith finds Durham. Now Deron Davis puts it on the floor. End of the lane. Defender off his feet and the foul. Well, this is textbook basketball, Joe. Here's the back down in single coverage. Davis goes to work. We've seen this jump hook on multiple occasions. The ball comes off his fingertips very softly, just like a jump shooter. The hook shot is the same. And if you want to get that carom or soft bounce, you got to let it roll off those middle three fingers softly. Seven for Davis. Indiana back to within one. And Assembly Hall coming alive. Sutton. And now the Hoosiers 
with a chance for their first lead of the day. It's Finnessy to the rim and rejected by Williams. Bringing us to the under 16 timeout as Indiana has charged back from down by as many as eight to get to within one. Back here in Bloomington, one point game and take a look at the playbook. Sponsored by Lexus with Coach Lavin. Well, Archie Miller's team getting some stops and shutouts and also executing with precision. Good ball movement, everyone getting a touch. Some nice pick and roll action, backside triangle, then the isolation to clear out for Davis, who uses that nimble footwork to finish. Once again, good ball movement going high-low inside for the easy bucket, Justin Smith able to deliver on that possession. And so the Hoosiers defensively putting a period at the end of the sentence or the end of the defensive possessions with a rebound and then offensively continuing to probe or explore inside looks and it's paid dividends as they cut into their nine point deficit now down only one. All right, McMahon rejected that inbounds pass. Tennessee will trigger it again. Want to go back inside. Ron Davis defended by Williams, doing his best to deny the ball entry. Continues to front it. Shot clock down to 10. Here's Justin Smith. He's working both sides of the floor. That's a good, a good sign. Good defense here by Louisville as well. Back into Smith, who gets blocked by Williams, and just not a whole lot of space there on that possession for the Hoosiers. Good offense and good defense. And that happens sometimes. Got a stalemate. McMahon gets fouled. That goes on Smith. And both these teams so well prepared. And both head coaches have a feel for one another, a familiarity uh, with what the other is trying to do. And that's why we're seeing this defensive battle, like two great pitchers in baseball, which you can appreciate as the voice of the Dodgers. We're Thank watching, you uh, this is Koufax against, uh, what, Bob Gibson? Wow, sure. You want to throw it back there? That's uh, true for McMahon, it's a little too strong. They have a guy now named Kershaw, a little more modern take on it. That's right, I'm exposing my age over the hill. Jafon Davis backs down, off the rim, rebound to Williams. Although Sandy was quite a basketball player. How about Kershaw? Yeah, the tongue twister, he said quickly a number of times. <laughs> I'll leave that to you. Williams got around Davis and then like a bar of soap, Steve Lavin. Wow, too much corn on the cob with the butter at the pregame meal. <laughs> Did a nice job of sealing, but just couldn't pay it off. I mean, don't you use the little stabbers on the end of the corn? Doesn't matter how much butter you have. It is the holiday season, True. so it's appropriate we weave in some corn on the cob, mashed potatoes. Langford beef. launches, nowhere close. Rebound, Wara. Indiana tantalizing and close. Wanted to get over that hump. Now that was not the offensive possession. A lot for Morgan on Wara that Archie Miller would want. And here's the crowd, the help defense. Uh, Juwan Morgan providing that resistance at the rim against the Cardinals. Devontae Green in the point guard replacing Rob Finnessy. Here's Laura with a straight on three to end the drought for the Cardinals and extend the lead back to four. Yeah, Wara so comfortable offensively on his catches. Supreme confidence at peace with his game and plays at a pace which allows him to make good judgments. Whether to drive it, whether to shoot it, whether to pass it. Uh-oh. And right through the whistle, Williams came over for the block and then allowed a contact with Langford. So, and that's what we spoke of earlier in this half where the officials have to be careful is understand with the physical play at both ends of the court and both these teams trying to establish the paint or the rim. Uh, they're fighting for the turf, so to speak. And important, you communicate if you're the official's crew. Aaron Pass. Jonathan Green. 
And they nearly turned it right back over. Instead, it's numbers for the Cardinals. And Wara slams it with two hands. He can do it all. Well, so quick. The ability to get up in the air and play over the top. He's got 18 to lead all scores. Now Langford kicking. Green rising. On rebound to Quan Ford. Williams will try a three. Coming up the shot. Chris Matt Watts from 6'11 big man. Early on in the shot clock. Langford tries to counter and does with a tough finish. Well, there's that length covering so much ground with the bounce, able to stretch out. 13 for the freshman. Double figures in every game of his Indiana career so far. Moore is feeling it. And turned it over. Langford. Fouled on the floor by Quan Ford. There's Romeo again. One bounce, but long strides as he bounds from one side of the floor to the other, and then the length to put it down off the glass for the bucket. That's a little glimpse of his potential, not only in college, but obviously NBA prospects looking at him as a candidate at the next level. I get the feeling like those five seconds were running out. We're able to get it in. Indiana looking to beat Louisville for the first time since 2002. Langford barrels inside in the second offensive foul of this half for the Hoosiers. And a big part of Louisville's attack today has been Jordan Wara. 18 points to lead all scores. At both ends of the floor here, navigating along the baseline, jamming one home, probing the high ball screen. Defender goes under, he sees the daylight, tickles the twine from distance, and again, playing power or muscle basketball. Actually, I've known Jordan Wara since he was nine or 10 years old. His father, an excellent coach in Buffalo, Erie Community College. Matter of fact, they're 8 0 this year, ranked 11th in the country. He'd be here today, but his team has a game. And of course, having coached at St. John's, uh, he recruited a lot of his father's players because they were well schooled. Shot clock's inside a 10. McCoy Agal. Good box out from Zach McRoberts, fresh into the game, and he clears the rebound. Here's Morgan against a gal. Finds a cutting Smith. Chris Mack calls a timeout, wants to talk it over defensively, but Ryan McMahon, the sniper from long range, deep. That's Reggie Miller range. How about it? Torching the Nets. Timeout. Well, more offensive execution, Joe, for the Hoosiers. Well devised by Archie Miller. And excellent teaching in terms of post play as you see the ball passed around the horn. A good delivery into the post as we watch Morgan go to work with that dime to the dive by Justin Smith who finishes it off. That's called playing in pairs or a tandem. Both a perimeter and a post player working in concert to be efficient offensively. Indiana shooting above 50% as a team on the season. That's top 10 in the country. And those numbers are produced when they're sharing it like that. It is a thing of beauty when they're right. Smith lost his footing. Found Morgan who got loose to stuff at home. And every shot that the Hoosiers take seemingly is a point blank range. And again, that's not a coincidence. That's because of the instruction. Uh, Archie Miller to 
continue to attack the basket, whether it's through cutting, post feeds, or dribble penetration. Green comes up with a steal. And now one on two, Devontae Green got blocked from behind by Enoch. But a whistle and a foul. Nope, they're going to call it goaltending. There's a goaltend on Enoch. Count the basket and a one-point game midway through the second half in Bloomington. Louisville by a point in a game where Indiana has not led. A couple head coaches early on in their tenures at these programs, but with connections, both having coached under Sean Miller. Chris Mack was his top assistant in Xavier before Sean Miller left for Arizona. Chris, of course, took over in Xavier. And then Archie went with Sean's top assistant his first couple of seasons in Tucson. Heading off to Dayton. And so kind of the, the Sean Miller coaching tree. Really, though, it's the John Miller coaching tree. Their father is a legendary high school coach in Pennsylvania. More than 600 wins in his career. Got a court named after him there. And when you talk to Archie or Sean Miller, they have such great respect for their father, not only as a loving father, a parent, but also the way he sees the game. And he informed both Archie and Sean in terms of sensibilities in coaching, uh, the lens or the prism that they look at the game through is a result of their father. But a one-point game, midway point of this second half. Sutton launches a three. That's short. Tennessee with his eyes up. Two point guards on the floor right now. Here's Green. And now Finnessy again. Coming out of the timeout, let's see what Archie Miller instructed his team to look for. It appears, again, the investigation to something inside, whether it's driving or post feed. Green able to wrap it around. Morgan got fouled, and we check in with Lisa. You had it exactly right, Lav. And at the end of that possession, that's exactly what Archie Miller told his team to do, is get Juwan Morgan more involved. He was encouraging his team to see more inside-outside action. That will encourage a little bit of a chess match, because in talking to Chris Mack before the game, he said we can't let Juwan Morgan catch the ball too deep into the lane. And if he does catch it, free throw line extended, look for them to surround him. We'll get a lot of traffic in there. All the production, Lisa has come inside for Indiana. They're just 2 of 11 from outside. Kind of reverting back to last year and the struggles they had from three. Here's Green in the drive. Contested shot wouldn't go, but an offensive rebound for Smith. And a second chance opportunity has been dominated by the Cardinals. 14-0 to this point in the game. But the Hoosiers here have a second chance opportunity because that offensive rebound. See if they convert. Take advantage. Under 10 to shoot. Here's Morgan. Tipped in the air and cleared by Wara. Not a bad look. Just didn't get the lift on the legs on that shot coming up short. Cunningham got a little too fancy with it. Indiana ball. Overpassing in tight quarters when well defended against a team that's well prepared will be costly. That's the sixth second half turnover for the Cardinals after they turned it over just twice before the break. Romeo Langford They're on a Morgan screen who rolls to the bucket and was open for a moment, but they couldn't find him. Instead, it's Finnessy to give Indiana its first lead of the day. and the counter punch true to form for this entire contest. Twenty one Jordan Ward today. Dangerous pass. Gamble from Ward on leads to an opportunity for Indiana and another lead for the Hoosiers as Morgan heads to the line for a chance at three.
well. Tennessee lighten one up. You need to make a play honest. Bottoms of the net. Hoosiers on the lookout. Morgan says, I got one of those. How about the soft roll? The shooters touch, deliver a dime in traffic. Morgan with the finish. John Tesh's round ball rock on Fox this weekend. Wow, bringing it back. Oh, so good. Childhood, memories, holidays, hoops. And it has been a good one in Bloomington. One point game, Indiana didn't take its first lead of the game until just a couple of minutes ago, but dominated as far as the second chance points go. 14 nothing. but they've gotten it done inside. They get another point from Juwan Morgan, who's their second leading scorer today with a dozen. There's that old phrase, don't let what you don't do get in the way of what you can do. And that's how Indiana has stayed in this game. Continuing to probe, investigate the post opportunities. Man finally comes up short. Got away with leaving him open. Back inside they go. Morgan able to maintain his dribble, then had it knocked away. Indiana's done a better job today, not turning the ball over, but it rears its head there. And the Cardinals, when Indiana bigs put the ball on the deck and begin to bounce, they'll collapse like a Venus flytrap. They'll drop in there and give a dig hand, and that led to the turnover. Williams trying to go over Morgan. McRoberts turned it over right under his own bucket, and then looked out as Louisville couldn't corral it. Joe on the next possession, when Morgan gets a touch in the post, he's got to put the ball on the chest with the elbows out under the chin and look to see where the help def defenders are coming in terms of the Cardinals. And then with a quick read and react, make a choice. That's usually a strength of his, really good vision out of the post. Absolutely, but we're seeing the Cardinal now drop in more defensively as a counter to the success the Hoosiers are having in the paint. He's defended right now by Williams, so Smith drives it against Wara. Great defense from Wara. He's gotten it done with 21 points offensively, but a solid defensive possession for him there. A good judgment there not to force by Wara. Get it out. Double team, get it around the horn, get some early movement. You don't have the map in transition, the advantage. Williams thought about it instead. Hands it off to Perry with just five to shoot. He's 0 for 6 today. He'll drive it, throw it up there wildly and miss. Now Indiana looks to counter. Finnessy with his eyes up. Finds his fellow freshman Langford who gets fouled on the drive. And will head to the line with a one and one. Well, Indiana making a living this afternoon off the post, throwing strikes on the inside. Smith there able to finish a good dive by Smith, the delivery by Morgan, an excellent post passer, and then Lankford inside sharing the sugar to Morgan with the finish. Nice job there by Morgan, keeping the ball up, not bringing it down in traffic, using his height, his length to finish over the top. Langford earns his second. We go over to Lisa. Well, Chris Mack concerned with the noise level here at Assembly Hall. Guys, we have heard it all day long. He actually wrote echo every call on his whiteboard, and he said, what I mean by that, guys, is everyone has to have their eyes up for the next call. Look for the assistants making the call. He even encouraged the bench players to also make the call. He said the difference of winning or losing this game could be one guy not being on the same page. Here we go. For the first time, Lisa, his squad trails by two buckets. Inside six minutes to go. Enoch wants it inside. He's fronted by Morgan. So it's Wara who gets bumped and fouled by Justin Smith, number three on him. And those are the calls that drive the coach crazy. Because you'll have such physical contact at the rim and then here, what seemingly is incidental, no advantage or disadvantage. They do catch their feet. They do tangle up some there. Of course, the fans not happy. Wara showing his flexibility there. Looked like the yoga pose. You know a little something about that. Have to. Yeah. Flexibility getting old. Bad backs. Get those hips stretch it out. Downward dog. <laughs> happy baby. Barry gets fouled. It's back to back sophomores on Indiana. That's six total on the Hoosiers. So moving forward, Louisville on the bonus. And in fairness to the officials, 
Well, it's mandated top down. J.D. Collins, the head of officiating in the NCAA. Advantage goes to the offense, and they're trying to clean up the physicality on the ball. They want more freedom of movement, higher scores, more entertaining brand of basketball, in theory. War up. In and out, and Morgan clears it. Not that it's not been entertaining today, but there hasn't been a whole lot of room for offense. Pretty good defensive performance from both sides. Yeah, two Joe Frazier's in high tops here. Just duking it out. Morgan throws it up there way too strong. Laura pulls it out of the pack. Block four. Again, another good choice. These teams concentrate and focus. They understand you gotta get a good look on every possession. Laura left alone for three more and a career high 24. Brings the cards back to within one. A sense of feel for when his team needs that lift uh, to step up and pose his will, bring the skills to the table. And that's what you see there. Crunch time performer. Big stage, money. Averages five points per game last year, up around 20 this year, with 24 this afternoon on the road against Indiana. Such a quick release as well. Davis outside, fantasy. Offline with a three. Louisville will have it back with a chance to retake the lead. And War with the size, little inside outside basketball. And that quick release, just enough daylight. But when you're six foot seven, and that quick trigger, the combination, the shot preparation, to be able to catch and shoot, lock and load, torching nets. 13 of the 20 since the break for the cards. 24 of the 53 total. It's a slow closeout as well by Juwan Morgan. He's got to take that airspace. Great cut. McMahon to put the cards back in front. And a diagonal cut to the basket. And guess who delivered the precise pass? Wara once again. We mentioned that Costco or the Swiss Army knife. So many tools in his box. That's a foul on Ina. And it will put Indiana at the line. A one and one coming up as part of what is going to be a tremendous finish in Bloomington. Two of the great programs in college basketball and a good one today. Fifty-five, fifty-four, Louisville in front behind 24 points today from Jordan Wara. Well, good execution by the Cardinals as we look at Wara taking one to the hole and flushing, working off the high ball screen, gets daylight and able to knock one down again. Such a quick trigger, like an old gunslinger in the wild, wild west. Another one from distance. And watch this ball movement as McMahon is going to come off the screen, lose his man on Enoch, and get the easy layup, the delivery by Wara. And uh, just that ability by McMahon to rub his defender, Zach McRoberts, off that high screen. And that's working in concert. Uh, that's an example of execution uh, at a high level as a team. How about Deron Davis, who's around 50% on the season at the line, doing just that. And tying the game with 346 left to go. Wara, it's been a complete performance. There's 24 points. He showed the assists. He's got a couple of those. He's also got 11 rebounds, giving him a double double. Yeah, the international competition playing for the Nigerian yeah. national team, having a father as a coach, just like Sean and Archie Miller benefited from that. But his dad, Alex, knows the game. Three to shoot. Game. Cunningham along two. Around and out. Touched every part of the rim before falling off into Indiana's, Indiana's hands. And the Hoosiers one and done again in terms of securing that rebound off the Cardinals' miss. That was an issue in the first half early on in the second. Davis couldn't get it off of the bounce from Finnessy. Yeah, in just a bit of a hurry on the delivery of that pass. It was well defended, uh, but clearly Morgan was open. 
if he could have delivered. Inside three minutes now, a tie game. Sutton, stop and start. They got the freshman Langford off his feet and drew the foul, which will put him at the line for a one and one. Sutton's versatility can shoot it from distance, can put it on the deck and create play make and shot make. Has a rim game as well. Look at the physical stature, the stout build that he has, and he's able to utilize that in a productive manner. Louisville, one of the best foul shooting teams in the country. And they usually spend a lot of the day there. In Indiana, one thing they've done very well today is keep Louisville off the line. Just five of seven. Well, that speaks to game planning by Archie Miller and his staff, but also leveling off dribble penetration, not allowing angles to the basket, therefore less rotation. And the teams get in rotation are more vulnerable to fouls. One of two for Sutton, one point game, inside two and a half. Here's Langford into a crowd, he got fouled, and he's headed to the scrub. Now that's an example of not having defensive discipline. You want to be aggressive, you can stun at the ball, but you can't reach in the cookie jar. You don't want to lunge or gamble. Or make a team earn it on the half court with a contested shot over the top. Into the double bonus now. Langford just five for nine at the line. And this is an Achilles heel that Archie Miller and his staff are aware they're going to have to address uh, if you hope to be competitive. Uh, it's like missing extra points in football or missing field goals in football. Uh, you get opportunities from the charity stripe. You can't come away. 0 for 2 and have an empty possession in tight games down the stretch. And so Louisville stays in front, nearing the two-minute mark. Looking for their fourth consecutive win here in the first season under Chris Mack. That's turned over. It's Langford in traffic, a finger roll to put Indiana back in front. And I love the sophomore making up for those two missed free throws, Joe. Get it back on defense. For space, he leans and gets fouled. Kristen Cunningham, the graduate transfer and team captain, heads to the line for two. We look back at Langford's go ahead bucket. Well, Langford, the freshman, playing like a sophomore here, pushing it in transition, sees the open court and finger rolls a nice carom as well. And then here's the foul. I didn't see it. I'm not sure how you could defend it any better. Straight up verticality, uh, both arms fully extended to the rafters here in Assembly Hall. And the contact was initiated by Cunningham. Nice save there, by the way, in the class for Langford. I like Absolutely. That. Yeah. Yeah. I came back around to it, learning from you, the pro. You responded just as he did. Resilient. Louisville back in front by one. What a game it's been. What a finish we're going to have here at Assembly Hall. Got to go back to what's worked. Langford or Morgan. How about Finnessy? A straightaway triple. Freshman to another. From Langford to Finnessy. Indiana by two with a minute 15 left. McMahon short. Offensive rebound. Wara leaves it short as well. And tracked down in the corner by Finnessy inside of a minute left to go. Standing time and score here critical. He 
That's your two best involved, and there it is. Morgan off of the feed from Langford to extend the lead to four. Cunningham quickly the other way. He can't hit. And a rebound from Morgan, who's promptly fouled. Well, we've been watching two of the best, Joe, like a great chess match. Here's Finnessy, who's hit some timely shots, made excellent contributions at both ends of the court. Here's the two-man game. Show the screen and then slip. Use that foot speed to dive to the basket. A good delivery by Langford and Morgan finishes it off. That's two-man basketball, well devised by Archie Miller. But wow, these people are pulling their hair out here. That's the eighth miss at the foul line for Indiana today. Archie Miller, boy. And I like his emotion. He's letting his team know how much he cares. And in those first couple years, you've got to set that tone. You're the thermostat for Indiana basketball. I love it in a moment. Cards have gone almost four minutes without a field goal. Indiana's taken advantage, matching its largest lead of the day at four. What a day it's been on Fox with Seton Hall beating Kentucky in overtime to start the day, and then this one, Marquette and Wisconsin to follow us. So four-point game, and another free throw coming up for Juwan Morgan. Indiana today at the stripe is 10 of 18. And it continues to be a perplexing issue for a team that overall from the field is one of the best shooting teams in the country. Well, and it happens. It does become psychological at some point. And that's why you have sports psychologists like Putty and golf, the short game, that sometimes plagues a, a golfer. Uh, the same can happen in basketball. But you got to keep working at it, get in the gym, work on your routine and make the adjustments from a mechanical standpoint in terms of technique. He makes one of two, and it's a five-point game. 15 for Morgan. Louisville needs it badly. Cunningham tries to provide it with a baseline drive. He gets cut off, and Williams steps out for a three that's offline. Cunningham is on the baseline, and Indiana's got it with 19 seconds. Well, well-devised defense, and that's a look that Archie Miller will live with. Took away the drive, the basket on the interior, and they were left with a jump shot by Williams. Both Williams and Warwick going to the bench with the 19 the pressure seconds. On four comes in. He here is having the spacing on your press offense where you can make a secondary cut. Often the first cut is taken away by a switch or good defense. It's that second cut. Get it into Langford, and he gets fouled from behind by Sutton. It has been an issue for Indiana this season, breaking the press. It's been an issue controlling the ball. There they got it inbounded cleanly, and it puts Langford to the line for two. Well, it's how you get better. These are the games under duress with pressure, a big stage where you learn to flex the muscle and become a crunch time performer. And we're watching a freshman grow right before our eyes. It hits there. It's been a rough day at the line, but you put it all together, and he's again leading the way for the Hoosiers with 18. I think, you know, the Hoosiers learn from some of their setbacks. Uh, the loss at Arkansas was a one-pointer. Uh, but by playing good competition early, it prepares you for moments like this. Already two conference games, too, and two tight conference games. Maybe Northwestern beating Penn State. And now looking for their third in a row. Although Kristen Cunningham says not so fast. Knock it down to three. Cutting it to four. Take another quick break. Prior to that three from Cunningham, an 8-0 Indiana run. And a game they trailed for the first 35 minutes. They now lead it by four. You know, with the longer Big Ten schedule, they get a couple games out of the way in December. Off to a 2-0 start. One of the five 
Both 2 0 teams in the Big Ten in the early part of the season. What a month of December the Hoosiers are trying to put together. You know, the deepest conference in the country. When you look at the Big Ten, I think ACC at the top may have more teams capable of cutting down the nets. And to finish, Ian Hill will go to the line. Uh, but there's no doubt uh, the Big Ten, in terms of depth, as impressive as any conference in the country. And Nebraska has improved, bringing back their core from last year's successful season, but they appear ready to punch through to an NCAA tournament. Minnesota, much improved. And we know the usual contenders at the top are always legit. I think when Sean Miller watches this game film tonight, so over fast forward through the free throws over a root beer. Yeah. Tennessee's uh, contributions uh, in terms of playmaking, uh, distributing the ball, his floor leadership, uh, some pesky defense as well. And then the timely threes to keep Indiana in the mix. A lot like he did at Penn State earlier this week. It's coming down at a knock out of bounds. But yeah, when Indiana has needed him, the freshman's been there. That's big picture, too. Devontae Green was injured early on this season. One of the silver linings to that is that Indiana's been able to find out what they have already in the freshman finishing. And go to the monitor to ensure that they have the call right. And Louisville really has used the same recipe in preparation for ACC play. Going against tough competition at Seton Hall. They pulled the win out here. They're going to review who the ball went off. Could have been a traveling call there as he took four or five steps. I think it went off Cunningham's forearm left. Yep, headed towards Martinsville there early as he got the uh, traveling call but didn't get the call. I agree. I'm not going to... I concur with uh, your thoughts on this, Mr. Well, Davis. Thanks, Slav. Yeah. You're always there for You're me. kind of a video replay expert. Am I? Because of all your time in baseball, it's that uh, outliers, that Gladwell principle. Sure. You know, early in your life. Right. A neophyte, and yet you've got the 10,000 hours in effect already. Right. I was watching replays in the room, for sure. <laughs> well, actually, they keep the call. And well, inbounded with five seconds, down five. Even a quick score, a quick turnover. Tried to get it into McMahon, couldn't find him. Quan Four climbs the ladder. Now it's McMahon getting fouled by Langford. And he'll have three shots with two seconds. Boy, not what you want. No pun intended, but a cardinal rule or cardinal sin. And you'll learn in Lankford's case, close out, don't give a crafty player like Ryan McMahon a chance to get you in the air with that shot fake. And you put one of the best shooters in the country at the line, it's in McMahon's numbers. And the ideal is if you can have these teachable moments, talk about them in film session, go back and do drill work on closeouts, late game situations, but still win the game. When it's a nightmare is when those plays cost you a game. Uh, they could determine whether you make the NCAA tournament or not. Now, still enough time here. We're going to see Louisville will switch all, all screens, come into the ball, try and get a denial, five-second count, uh, or a steal on the inbound. On the flip side, Coach Miller wants to create enough space to allow his players to free themselves up and make that secondary cut. You don't want to get the catch too close to the baseline, the out-of-bounds play. Because that baseline acts as an extra defender. Uh, corners as well, you want to avoid. She's going to go with a tandem here, Joe. Give these two a chance. Now, Archie Miller is going to take a timeout. And Chris Mack had taken his defender off the ball to try and double team the action coming to the ball and then we've got the timeouts see what the counters are some tense moments for indiana fans in here it looked like they had
sealed the deal. And the foul, Brian McMahon, who promptly hit three free throws, could bring it back to within two. And now they've got to execute one more inbounds pass and make a free throw or two of their own. And Archie Miller is letting his team know right now in that huddle they have three timeouts, so there's no reason to throw a risky pass. Uh, and you want to be able to pass the ball to someone open, but also be strong with the ball on the catch. Chris Matt drawing up the pressure here. Here's the foul situation for the Cardinals. Four on Stephen Enoch, four on Dwayne Sutton. Obviously, it would be a real problem if they find a way to pull a miracle and get this game into overtime. Well, and that speaks to Indiana playing smash mouth basketball, going inside and putting the Cardinals in foul prone situations. The more you attack off the bounce, the more post feeds that you get, the more likely you are to get to that bonus. Nick Roberts to trigger the inbound. And a foul before. So they don't get an opportunity to go for the steal, but no time runs off the clock, and they put the pressure back on Indiana at the line. So that works out well for Chris Mack. You don't end up getting the intentional foul, but you put Indiana at the line, which is one of the areas that they've struggled in terms of free throw shooting, and you potentially give yourself an opportunity to get the ball back for a shot, depending what's left on the clock. It's going to be Langford, it appears, that will shoot foul shots. Seven for 12 today at the line for Romeo Langford. Yeah, 2.2 seconds is enough time to get a shot off. And now, the Cardinals don't have any timeouts. So they were able to get one there. And Chris Mack was able to instruct his troops like a free timeout. And to cover if he makes one and misses the second. Uh, what they're going to do in terms of trying to get a three-point shot. Again, Sutton is finished. Langford goes there for two shots. Takes a little pressure off himself, making it a three-point game. Now tries to put it on. And the final of those 21 points should seal the deal. Archie Miller saying back off, don't even move, why defend it? Cunningham throws it up and hits it. But the two makes from Romeo Langford proved to be enough. 68-67, what a game this was. Well, and Joe, that last shot is emblematic of this entire afternoon of punch, counter punch, Two teams executing, playing their hearts out. ACC versus Big Ten. College basketball is healthy. First win for the Hoosiers against Louisville since 2002, snapping a four-game skid against the Cards. What a day it's been on Fox. We had an overtime game in game one, a one-point game here in game two, and there's more coming. Steve Lab and Elisa Byington, Joe Davis saying so long from Bloomington. We'll get you to our Fox College Hoop studio in Los Angeles right after this break.